um, I'm going to de dedicate this lecture to my wife, who is uh, seen there in her youth, and she was a very serious woman mathematician long before uh, there are other mathematicians. Now there is an exhibition here about women in mathematics. She took her PhD in 1954, long before, different era. And uh, I want to dedicate this to her. She died, as you see, earlier this year. Right, so now I've got to press the right buttons to this is advanced technology. I, I was not only, I'm older than John. When I was born, well, the computer wasn't even a glimmer in anybody's eye. Um, now, I promised to talk about the Riemann hypothesis. Um, and so, what is the Riemann hypothesis? Well, first of all, who was Riemann? Well, uh, he was the most famous German mathematician of his time, and he still is one of the great figures in history of mathematics. There is a picture of Riemann. Uh, you can recognize him because of his beard. Oh, at that time, everybody had a beard. Um, he lived a short life, you see, only he died at the age of 40. He did a fantastic amount. His collected works occupy one volume. That every contribution in that volume has created an industry. If you want, you can be brilliant and write one work, and that's enough. The one work is a collection of ideas which has continued to the present time. Now, the Riemann zeta function, which this is the conjecture is about, is this function here. It's this function of zeta s, it's the sum of the reciprocals of the integers to the power s, and if you think of s not just as a real number, but as a complex number, Riemann showed that it was an analytic function of this complex variable, and the Riemann hypothesis is very simple. Very simple. What does it say? This Riemann hypothesis was formulated in 1859, that the computer wasn't even dreamt of, of course, um, and it says that in the critical strip, the critical strip is when x lies between 0 and 1. Any 0 of this function has to be on the line x equals a half. In this critical strip, in the middle, there is a line x equals a half, and all the zeros of this function should be on that critical strip. And this has been verified numerically for millions and millions. Every computer you can throw at it always finds the zeros on this line. But there is no proof. Computers can't, prove, can't produce proofs yet. And so the question is, how can you prove this? So it's very simple. Solve the Riemann hypothesis and you become famous. Well, if you're famous already, you become infamous. <laughs> Where's the punchline? Here is the proof. Okay, this is the entire proof on page. So we're going to prove the Riemann hypothesis by contradiction. The Riemann hypothesis says that in the strip, and there's a picture of the strip, Okay, zero, one, critical lines of the half, and you assume there is a zero, not on the, you assume that this yellow cross is a zero that shouldn't be there. And the claim is, you try to assume it's there, go through an argument, and the argument leads to a contradiction, therefore the assumption was wrong, therefore that yellow cross wasn't there, therefore the theorem is true. That's a proof by contradiction, and the standard proof, most proofs are of that kind. So you go ahead. Now I can think, look at the right picture here. So what do you do? Now, you use this function t. Now, this function t is a nice function, in particular, it, it, it composes one of these weak analytic functions. You compose one with another one, you get another one. They're, they're well behaved. So you can take your function t, you compose it with the zeta function, which is analytic, and so, and you, you will look at it only in a compact set where you keep away from the bad points of the zeta function. In that set, uh, this is defined, and I made a small change of variable so that the, the cross, yellow cross becomes the origin. Okay, very, very small change of variable. And notice that the rectangle that you draw in the critical strip, which is slightly away from the edges, is a convex set. And so by this by the time you change this, you change the yellow point to be the, more or less the zero of an, another convex set. And you examine it carefully, and you find this function you get turns out to, it's, well, it's got it up there. F of 2s is 2 of f of s. It's homogeneous of degree 2. Very simple. Where does the 2 come from? Well, the 2 comes from the fact that you're dealing with L2. If you took LP, the LP difference between 1 and 2, you'd get 
P instead of, instead of two. That, that doesn't matter. The important thing is you get a non-zero number bigger than one. And then this is homogeneity. Well, if you take two, a function like that, which is actually defined as the origin and vanishes the origin, it's actually quadratic polynomial. It's quadratic degree two, it's homogeneous degree two, and it vanishes at the origin. Well, that function is zero. So uh, I've written it down for you. In other words, a function is analytic, and it's equal to zero, it implies it's identically zero. If f is identically zero, go back the change of variable from f to zeta is actually rash by rational transformation. So if one is zero, the other is zero. Contradiction in the proof, QED. It is extremely, you see, just a few lines. All the hard work is going into this function t. That was discovered, designed for a quite different purpose. That was designed for the purpose of physicists, to impress physicists. Now, by chance, by accident, I stumbled on this. Well, that's very nice, isn't it? You, you, you discover something by mistake, or not by mistake, but by doing something you weren't expected to do. Right, well, I think... Here we go from here. Solve the great problem. Where do you go? Well, the Riemann hypothesis, called RH, can be generalized in many ways, and you prove it, when you generalize it in many ways, you prove it step by step. Having proved it for the first version, you'll get a more difficult version, and so on. But there's a very subtle point. Proving it step by step is not the same thing as proving them all at once. You have to be a logician to know this. But you think that if you can prove everything step by step, essentially that gets you everything. That's not quite true. It depends on logic. It depends on what causes ZFC axioms, the Mello, Frankel, which is to do with theory. And C serves the axiom of choice. And the axiom of choice hides many choices. And that's where the things really get interesting. Then the question is, Numerical computation. Riemann and zeta function was interesting because it gave you information about primes. If you actually want to know what the numbers give you, you have to compute. That's numerical computation. That's not the same thing as proof they exist. Now here there's a lot of work for young people. When young people are here, they hear that a problem has been solved, the thing is all done with. Not at all. This is just the beginning. Now you can use lots of people in mathematics, computer science, logic, and physics, they can get to work. Because lots of questions remain to be solved. And then the question is, the most general version of Riemann hypothesis altogether, I claim, should be thought of as undecidable theorem, and that's the kind of theorem that Kurt Gödel made famous. So that's the task for the future. Beyond this, use the most powerful tools you've got available, examine every conjecture, proven and non-proven, and decide which are effectively computable and on what time scale. Some questions you need to know the answer tomorrow, some you need to know yesterday, Sometimes you can wait for a year. Sometimes you can wait for a billion years if you want to know the future of the cosmos and decide which decisions you have time to wait for. Uh, by the way, I put the word non-frozen in there. Uh, in, in the British courts of justice, English courts of justice, you can find, be found guilty or innocent. It's a binary choice. <coughs> but in Scotland, which is more subtle, there's a third choice. It's called non-proven. You can be found guilty, innocent, or non-proven. That's actually much more subtle logic. And come to Lot Scotland if you've got a subtle case. Okay, well, I've got, really gone on too long. It probably reused up my question time, but I better stop there. Thank you. Thank you.